I tried to bring in the practices of the private sector into the public sector. My mother was very strict with us. I did crazy things. The management and the union made no distinction at all. To that extent, I neglected my wife. I admired Napoleon and a timekeeper par excellence. No nationalization of Tata Steel. Jadi ultimately chuck me out of Tata. Aaj bhi mujhe loha banane ko nahi malum the. I'm the living epitome of that English saying, jack of all trades and master of none. Celebrating his 87th birthday with friends and admirers, Rusi Modi can afford to be relaxed and at peace with life, having lived a full life as a man of industry, a shrewd and dynamic administrator, and a visionary. Well, it has been uh, very lovely to know Mr. Rusi Modi. I know him as a very good human being. I've seen him for last maybe over 30 years. And uh, he, I think God has blessed him with everything. He's a type of person with full of humor, vigor at this age also. And uh, I think uh, God has given him all wonders of his life. And he's been too good to the people around him. आदमी अपना दुख भूल जाता है कि मेरा कोई दुख है तकलीफ है और इन्होंने जमशेदपुर में खासकर जमशेदपुर को एक नया शहर बसाया वहां के लोगों को दिल जीता लोगों को दर्द को समझा वो मजदूर हो किसान हो या स्टूडेंट हो या जुआ और है उसको दिल को समझा और उन्होंने जितना अपने स्तर से अपने कार्यकाल में जो हुआ सबका समाधान भी किया और उसमें सफल व्यक्ति रहे आज भी जो है उनको वही प्यार मोहब्बत से लोग आज जब जनसभा जाते हैं उनको लोग इतने ही चाहते हैं I've always been very very fond of him uh, like him admired him a lot uh, learnt a lot from him and uh, and always wished I could be closer to him. Rusi Modi ji ek aisi shakhs hain jo ki murda karkhane ko bhi jinda karte hain. Tin plate karkhana uska udaharan hai jo ki mar chuka tha aur Modi ji ka din kyo bahut kaafi bad gaya hai. Waisi hamare shahar mein ek cable company Indian cable company wah 8 barson se band hai aur Modi ji ko hum logon ne request kiya इनका प्रयास भी चल रहा है और हमारा रिक्वेस्ट है कि मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में वो कारखाना पुनः चालू हो यही आप तमाम भाइयों से हमारी अपेक्षा भी है जय हिंद जय भारत
अच्छा आप जल्दी आइए जल्दी आइए गैर के नौगे लोग बच गए The thing I remember most about my young life is the love and training that I received from my mother and father. My mother was very strict with us children. But she showered us with lots of love. And my father was so kind hearted that he wouldn't hurt a flea both of them were really wonderful people and to think about them is really all about my early life born in bombay on 17 january 1918 Rusi Modi enjoyed the privilege of having been born the eldest son of Sir Homi Modi an industrialist who served as a member of the Viceroy's Executive Council in the colonial era and as the governor of Bombay and UP in independent India Rusi grew up in this family to be a generous human being with a keen commitment to fair play and justice and a benign sense of humor my education in england was really an education in more ways than one when one goes to school or college one doesn't go really to learn about geography and history and algebra and geometry which you never use up throughout your life afterwards one goes because your character gets built up there you mix with other boys of your own age and things like that and you build your character and that is very important life in an english public school is a very disciplined life whether you are playing sports or whether you are studying or whatever you are doing you are doing it absolutely on time in a disciplined manner and after that sort of strict discipline you go i went up to oxford for 3 years where there was complete freedom to do what i wanted i didn't have to earn the money i spent my father sent it to me i always spent more than i was sent but i can truthfully say that the 3 years i spent at oxford were the three happiest years of my life they were unbelievably happy i did crazy things i did all kinds of things but i received a lot of satisfaction out of that we are sitting with india's industrial patriarch cliched though it might seem he is a living legend and there's only one living legend in the indian industry as far as i can recall and that's rusi hormus ji modi To friends, he is known as Rusi, and nobody has as colourful, adventurous, and fruitful a life so far as Rusi. Rusi, you recall having come across the great Albert Einstein, who reportedly was passing by your room and heard you play the piano, and then he struck up a friendship of sorts. and decided you know we so we used to say good morning to each other in the baths every morning i used to be an early riser and so was he and we used to meet in the baths uh, which was not attached to one's rooms in the college and uh, after we had said for about 2 3 weeks good morning sort of thing eh? he one day said i hear the tinkling of a piano in your room do you play the piano i said well i try and attempt to he said i'm trying to play the violin why don't you have a duet since i could not take the piano with me into his room his room was next door to mine and he came into my room and we started playing and after i didn't at that time quite realize whom i was playing with one thing was certain i was neither equipped nor did i question him on anything to do with nuclear physics when we became good friends 
He used to love strawberries and cream, and so did I. And we had many a meal together, and many a session of music together. This lasted for about six months, after which he left Oxford and went away. And I'm sure one of the biographies that you read again and again was that of Napoleon Bonaparte. And uh, he was a person who seemed to motivate you, inspire you. Uh, how did uh, the lessons imparted uh, by the biography of Napoleon come in handy later in life? I admired Napoleon. I became a fan of his. I, delay, I read everything that I could lay my hands on concerning Napoleon. But uh, we were two different characters. He was an army soldier and a brilliant one. And I was far from soldiering in any form. So, but uh, from his life, I did possibly unknowingly and unconsciously learn the force of discipline. I am very easy to get along with people and all the rest of it, but I'm a hell of a disciplinarian and a timekeeper par excellence. And, uh, well, all in all, the way he dealt with people appealed to me. He was certainly not a Democrat, and nor am I. Back from England, with a degree in history from Oxford, Rusi exercised his freedom of choice to join the Tata Steel Works as a hundred rupees a month shop floor keeper, a Kalasi. I approached Yadi Tata for a job. I went to him for a job, and uh, after a very brief interview, he employed me. My father was the director of his firm, so I presume he had made up his mind to employ me even before he interviewed me. But uh, little did he realize, or myself certainly didn't, that he was interviewing and employing his immediate successor. <laughs> Forty-five years later, I became chairman, and it was Jair Di Tato who handed over the chairmanship to me. Well, you're known as uh, the person who has been the expert par excellence in man management. Uh, when did that uh, um, come about? You're trying to manage people ensuring that there would not be a single strike uh, at the Tata Steel during an entire tenure. All happened without any planning whatsoever. I was not very happy with my managing director at that time, Sir Jagdeep Gandhi, and he was very happy when I was transferred to Calcutta to look after the purchases of coal in the office in Calcutta. I was in my office one day when Mr. Jayadi Tata and Sir Adesha Dalla came from Bombay to visit Calcutta. And a pen came into my room and said, Tata Sab Salam, dear. So I put on my coat and I went up to him and he said, Rusi, I understand that there has been a union formed of mercantile federation, it's called, of all the clerks in Calcutta offices, including practically everybody from our organization, except about 20 to 25 people working in your section who have not joined the union. Why? I said, I really don't know. So I went up, I said, I'll find out. I went to one of them and asked him, why haven't you joined the union? He said, why should we? We, we are quite happy working with you. So I went back and told him that this is what he told me. He said, well, to say, cut a long story short, I'm starting a personnel department in Jamshedpur. That then those days, personnel department, I said, uh, it deals with labor problems, and I want you to join that department. Forget about coal and all. So I said, you're the boss, you tell me what I should do, and I'll do it. So I went to Jamshedpur, and they put me in charge of the colleges and mines so that I would have nothing to do with the labor in Jamshedpur, which was part of the planning of Sir Jagri Gadi. So I said, okay. One day I was returning. This was about the about 27th, 28th of March. Five weeks later, I was coming to my office in the afternoon after this, my afternoon nap, 
and I saw everybody rushing out from the plant with blood streaming down their clothes and things like that. Everybody shouting, don't go anywhere near there. Well, I said, if there's trouble in the plant, although it's nothing to do with me because I was not in charge, for a personal man to run away from labor trouble would be not my idea of uh, any sort of good. So I went on and on. When I entered the works, I saw my, some of my friends with blood streaming. Zurusi, for God's sake, don't go anywhere near there. I went further and further. And before I could say Jack Robinson, I was surrounded deep by thousands of workers all saying, Maro Salaku Maro, shouting it to kill me. All my education here in Oxford had not prepared me for this ordeal. And I really didn't, my Hindi was very poor, I didn't know how to get out of it. So I started talking to them, not possible, people shouting. I saw at the top of my balcony, well, below in the building. I was in the courtyard, they were in the building. I saw the general manager, General Supriya, all get out and all that. The union leaders standing at the edge of the crowd, totally incapable of handling the crowd. So there I was in the midst of this howling, raging mob. I think one of the things that helped me was that I was wearing short white trousers, khadi trousers and a khadi shirt, which was not the usual dress worn by officers of the company. That might have helped me. Anyway, they were shouting and saying, when I, I've always behaved in, be, I believed in behaving normally if I can. These were hardly normal circumstances, but I asked the person standing next to me, if you had a match to light my cigar, I always carried a cigar with me. And I, he said, matches? I said, ah, matches. He looked at me to say, is this the time to light a cigar? I said, Anyhow, he said, matches, matches, matches. Asked a few people, they produced a matchbox. I took a long time to light the match. And in the meantime, suddenly inside me, a surge of confidence came. And I said, Bat Corona? Kya bat karinga? I don't think they quite realized I was officer class or whatever it was. They started talking to me. In a few minutes, I felt strong enough to say, Betka bat karunja hava hinga. So they all sat down. The, the people upstairs in the balcony couldn't believe their eyes. They saw me here in khaki shorts and shirt, addressing thousands of workers in broken Hindi, and I tell them to sit down, they sat down. After a while, I felt strong enough to say, I am going to go to work, 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 sort of. They went back to work. The telephone calls in my house to save every superintendent, the 45 departments, about 30 of them rang me up to come and save them from being beaten up. Every time I approached it, the word got round that there was a madcap of an officer who was prepared to talk to us. Then the ultimate thing was all that he wanted was somebody to talk to them, and then our management must have said, no, then they job to do to them. And they didn't talk. You also <laughs> saved uh, Tata Steel. Uh, from the hands of a minister, who is no longer a minister, of course, uh, who was bent on nationalizing it. Oh, that was much later. By that time, I had uh, the whole works of the Tata and Steel Company and the Mines and College, every, all the labor behind me. And, uh, well, I occupy a very unusual position. The labor loved me as if I was their leader. And I was uh, on the management side, which is very, I don't think it's happened before anywhere. In Jamshedpur, and I would like to take this opportunity of publicly saying so, we have now achieved a cooperation with our union, which is possibly unique in the world. A stage has been reached, a stage has been reached, when Mr. Gopal and I dare not break up this happy relationship that has happened. Because even if we wanted to, if even if we, by, by either of us lost our temper and told the other to get out and do this and all that sort of thing, neither of I can neither declare a strike in lockout, nor can he declare a strike. Not because of anything we are saying, not because of anything I'm saying, 
but because you gentlemen would not permit it. Neither me nor him would you permit to break up what has been achieved over the years. Take the case of nationalization. When some ministers wanted to make Mr. Jayadi Tata a czar of all the steel, thereby including Tata and the steel company also amongst the public sector, which he luckily objected to and did not fall for. At that time, who stood in the way of nationalization? All of you. You stood there behind your leaders and said, no nationalization of Tata Steel. A municipality was sought to be imposed upon Tata Steel. Our town of Jamshedpur was going to be taken over. Who stood? Who made the biggest and loudest noise? Of course, the public did, the business community and everybody, but the only voice I'm sure that the government will pay heed to is the voice of the workers of the Tata and the Steel Company and Jamshedpur. Led by Mr. Gopal and others, uh, Mr. Gopeshwar, Mr. Gopal, Mr. Vyas, and so many others, who are Mr. Chowdhury, who are, shall I say, opinion leaders in the, in the industrial workers' field. I think there is no greater tribute that I can pay to the kind of cooperation that has been achieved than to narrate these two instances where the management and the union made no distinction at all whether you belong to management or Mr. Gopal spoke as the managing director of TISCO and I spoke as the trade union leader of Tata Workers Union. <laughs> Rusi, who are the people who, looking back, uh, have really motivated you, inspired you? J.R.D. was one, your father and mother surely have been the other. They're the two most wonderful people I knew, my mother and father. J.R.D. was ultimately checked me out of Tata's in his, in his dotage and six months before he died. He didn't know what he was doing, but he was a great, great person. And I have nothing but utmost affection for him, in spite of what he did to me. I've had a, I had a very good marriage. It broke up because of my concentration of that period in my work. And to that extent, I neglected my wife she naturally, we agreed upon a divorce. But we've remained very good friends. Even today, I'm on the best of terms with my ex-wife. And everything I've done in life has brought me happiness. Well, Rusi is a great lover of the mountains and that's what brings him here again and again. As the uh, story goes, at one time he even claimed, I think uh, mischievously, that he even climbed up to Ma Ma Lutze, top of Lutze. But uh, he, he's, uh, he's an avid lover of the mountains. And uh, he comes again and again to Darjeeling, which is uh, right below Kinchinjunga, our third highest mountain. Mr. Modi has also been involved with the Mountaineering Institute. He was one of the governing body members for many years. Besides the mountains, of course, Mr. Modi enjoys playing bridge here. He, uh, he sometimes comes with a few bridge players who join him on this trip. Otherwise, he has some friends here who also play bridge. He spends his time making picnics, going into the, the hills, uh, walking, which he used to do a lot, but now he's not able because of his knees give him trouble. But he still loves coming here. While the industrial city of Jamshedpur, with its cityscape, filled all over with the landmarks of the Tata Industries has been the site of his steady rise to authority. The charm of the hill city of Darjeeling with its marketplace, its quiet leisureliness and its toy train has been a persistent draw. I fell in love with this city. 
I can't explain. It's not only the mountains. The mountains are certainly most extraordinary views of the Himalayas that you can get from anywhere. But it's the, it's the friendliness of the people, the town itself. Even the worst part of the town I love. I love the Nepalese people. I think they... They have a certain philosophy of life which entirely agrees with mine. And uh, I can't imagine another place in India where I would like to go for a holiday that I would prefer more than Darjeeling. And now I've got a f flat of my own here. I, I feel at, entirely at home. Hello, how are you? Yes, yes, I'm fine. How are you? No, I'm not going to come down for another ten days or so. But after I come down, we can meet and you can tell me all your woes and worries. Okay? All right then. Bye-bye. Bye. His house in Belvedere in Kolkata is evidence of his lifestyle, a cross between that of a late Victorian gentleman and that of a Kolkata Baba, the right mix of the Raj and democracy, allowing the ubiquitous R.K. Lakshman a field day with Lucy.
animal lover, gourmet, and lover and collector of art and artifacts, Rusi Modi relishes his privacy, soaking in the delicately designed and laid out surroundings that he has woven for himself. Work and play are perfectly balanced in Rusi Modi's life with his regular visit to and two hours of work at MOBA, his latest dream child. I had to do something, so I formed this company called MOBA, along with Mr. Bajoria and Rickson. So I took the name MOBA, Modi, Bajoria, and Richard. So we've now been in existence for about 11 years, and we're doing all right. The Crimea Steelworks name is Azastal and we sell it to people in India. And uh, gradually, we are becoming more and more known, and our business is improving. But basically, we're a trading company, and although for the time being we are importing only from Azastal, there is no restriction on our importing or doing any form of trading business and not only in steel, but in other materials as well, if the opportunity occurs.
After work, there is always time for the piano and bridge and the company of friends and the three months annual vacation in England. Rusi Modi's social concern extends to the arts. His stint at the helm of the Academy of Fine Arts, Kolkata, aimed at giving the institution a more public face and making it more useful to the artists. I'm very proud to be associated, particularly when the Rusi is a chairman of our trustees on that, because not only but just listening to him, you learn a lot. Such matured such experienced gentleman and his experience in various fields are really amazed me. You know, further to what you have said, uh, um, Mr. Ganguly, one of my earliest dreams about this academy was, and I wanted to put it into effect when the school that we were running is closed down, now it has been closed down. I have been to the houses and homes of many young artists whom you talk about, and I find that they paint in miserable home conditions, with small rooms, hardly any space. And now, surely it is possible for us to lay open some space in this academy where young artists can come in the morning, spend the whole day painting, and then leave their stuff behind and come the next day again and paint again. And in, in surroundings which are ideally suited for good painting and good ideas. And uh, I hope that that will be done soon enough. Ironically, the stern disciplinarian and idealist, Rusi Modi, resigned his office at the Academy of Fine Arts the very day we shot him at the academy. At one point of time, been very critical of the public sector, but you also became the chairman of both Air India and Indian Airlines. At that point of time, uh, one remembers uh, the uh, civil aviation minister was Gubar Ghulam Nabi Azad, and you said, uh, uh, he wants me to be Ghulam, but I need to be in Azad, and uh, that's where everything fell out. Is that right? No, it's not quite right. I tried to bring in the practices of the private sector into the public sector. And to that extent, I failed. The bureaucracy was so strong that uh, all my machinations could not succeed. And uh, so finally, I left. You know, it's breaking my head over a brick wall. You look happy. You look contented. Do you have regrets, sir, Rusi? Do you think uh, uh, you could have stayed back a little longer at Tata Steel? Do you think there were other feels that you could still conquer? Do you think you could have done something for India's economy, which seems to be doing better and better? Do you think you had a role to play in all this? Everybody born has a higher opinion of himself and his abilities than actually exist. And I must have had my share of it. I still believe that, yes, my continuing in Tata Steel would have been of some benefit to Tata Steel. But uh, Tata Steel is doing very well. I've got no, no complaints about the manner in which Tata Steel is functioning, except that they have production, they've got everything, but the people in Jamshedpur are unhappy. Jamshedpur and its common people, who raised and sustained the establishment of the Tatars in the rugged terrain of Charkhand, bring Rusi back there again and again to renew the bonds that he has had with them 
and help them through his social welfare organization, Helping Hand. I was here 50 years ago, and I was working on it. जो भी चीज जमशेदपुर चाहती हैं, वो मैं करना तैयार हूँ। मैं आप सब लोगों का बहुत आभारी हूँ कि मुझे आप लोग ने ये मौका दिया, आप लोग के सामने दो चार शब्द कहने का। सबसे पहले मैं आपको आश्वासन देता हूँ कि आपकी सोसाइटी को हेल्पिंग हैंड जो भी मदद दे सकती हैं वो देने तैयार हैं वो देंगी और मैं चाहता हूँ कि आपकी सोसाइटी के मुताबिक जो सब लोग ऐसे भी दूसरी भी स्वीस सोसाइटी होंगी जमशेदपुर में वो सब साथ में मिलकर काम करें कारण कि जो यूनिटी में जो हम स्ट्रेंथ है वो हम लोग को एक ही एक ही ले एक ही ले काम करने में नहीं आती है लेकिन वो भ आज के लिए मैं इतना कह सकता हूँ तो हेल्पिंग हैंड का मतलब ये है कि जहाँ भी वो मदद कर सकेंगे वो करेंगे हम कल पेपर में देखा हम लोग वो मिले क्या नहीं मिले लेकिन हम जाएंगे साथ में घर करेंगे मिलेंगे क्यों नहीं तीन तीन प्लेट घड़ी मैदान में ऊपर गोली खेलते थे उसका तेल को हम जा रहा ठेकेदारी में आप देख लिया बात हुआ कहाँ जा रहा ठिकाने में बट कल लेबरों को आया आप प्रभु आप हैं देवता हम बहुत खुश हुआ कल फोटो से के 1940 में 50 साल आगे मैं जमशेदपुर आए थे तीन महीने के लिए हमको ट्रेनिंग में भेजे थे और उसके बाद मैं बम्बे जाकर टाटा के ऑफिस में काम करने वाले थे मैं बम्बे जाने को इनकार किया मैं कहेंगे कि मैं टाटा कंपनी में काम करूंगा तो मैं जमशेदपुर में करूंगा और दूसरी जगह में नहीं करूंगा तो उन लोग ने मुझे मेरे टाटा साहब ने दूसरे लोग से बड़े 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 साथ थे वो मुझे कहते कि आप टेक्निकल आदमी नहीं है आपको कुछ लोहा बनाने के लिए मालूम नहीं है तो आप जमशेदपुर में क्या करोगे मैं क्योंकि ये नहीं करेंगे तो हाथ से काम करोगे क्या आप खलासी कोली का काम तो हो गया मैं को कहा हाँ जरूर करूंगा तो मुझे रोज का आठ आना है रोज का देकर आधा रुपया वो टाइम में देकर मुझे भर्ती दिया और तेरह रुपया छह आना डीएनए चलांस मिला तो मेरा मंथली इनकम था अट्ठाईस रुपया छह आना मैं बहुत खुशी से काम करते थे लेकिन मैं आगे नहीं बढ़ सके इसलिए कि मुझे कुछ भी लोहा का बनाने को मालूम नहीं है और मैं आप लोग आप लोग को एक सीक्रेट कहूँगा कि आज भी मुझे लोहा बनाने को नहीं मालूम है लोहा हम लोग ने बहुत से बनाया लेकिन ये लोहा मैंने नहीं बनाया आप लोग ने बनाया आप लोग ने लोहा बनाया मैं सिर्फ आप लोग को देखे और मैं चाहता था कि आप लोग खुशी रहेंगे सुखी रहेंगे तो कंपनी के लोहा जरूर बनेंगे तो ये मुताबिक मैं कितने साल काम किया 53 एंड हाफ इयर्स और उसके बाद कंपनी मुझे छोड़नी पड़ी तो मैं छोड़ कर कलकत्ता गया मैं समय समय जमशेदपुर आते हूँ मेरी माँ भी यहाँ मेरा माँ के कब्र भी यहाँ है मैं जमशेदपुर जरूर आऊँगा वो आप लोग के साथ में मेरे हों हमेशा आप लोग के दोस्त हों सबसे अच्छा मेरे मार्ग में आप लोग हैं। On every long tortuous trip to Gurmasani, where it all began with the first Tata Collier in the region, the people are there all along the route to greet him. An experience of a lifetime, so far as I'm concerned, I've never seen a road like this. अब यहाँ रहते हैं? जी हाँ। बल्ले तो रिक्शा चला सकते हैं हम। अभी क्या करते हैं? दुकान कर रहे हैं। हाँ जी। बहुत बहुत पैसा कमाते हैं। तो तीन तीन पीछे खत्म करते हैं। नहीं भैया अभी हमको गुरमसी नहीं जाना है। 
लेकिन आप सब लोग को आवाज बना चाहिए रास्ता बहुत खराब है मैं वापस नहीं आऊंगा यहाँ ये रास्ता पर Let me clear one point, which the previous speaker made, and that is that he wants a centre for excellence in Gurmasini. Let me inform you all that there is a centre for excellence after my name in Jamshedpur. But I have never visited it. I have never been inside it. I don't know what they are teaching, what they are spreading. So I can't tell you that I will do the same thing for Gurmasini, because I don't know whether I'll be doing any good or otherwise. Dosto, akbaron mein aap log patte hoinge ki Hindustan chamakte hain. Aarthik paristhiti aisi ho gayi hai ki Hindustan chamakte hain. हो सकते हैं और चमक का पैसा कहाँ जाते हैं मुझे नहीं पूछिए हमारे पास में ये आज़ादी मिलने के बाद हमारा सरकार आई है कांग्रेस आई है बीजेपी आई है सब सब सरकार आई है मेरी आँख में सब सरकार एक ही है वो बेसिक चीज हमारे देश में करते नहीं है करोड़ों लोग हैं करोड़ों लोग हैं कि जिसको पीने का पानी नहीं मिलता है अभी आप विचार करिए कि जे देश में पीने का पानी नहीं मिलेंगे वो देश की आर्थिक परिस्थिति चमके नहीं चमके उसमें क्या फ़ायदा है हमारा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में लिखे है कि प्राइमरी एजुकेशन कि जिस बिना कौन भी देश आगे नहीं बढ़ सकते हैं एक प्राइमरी एजुकेशन हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में होना चाहिए आज हमारे पास में दस करोड़ बच्चे हैं कि जिसको स्कूलिंग नहीं मिलते हैं आज हमारा सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है आबादी का लेकिन सरकार ने एक स्टेप नहीं लिया है आबादी को कंट्रोल करने के लिए ये कौन का कसूर है ये कौन का फॉल्ट है ये फॉल्ट है हमारा सिस्टम का ए सिस्टम के जिसमें हमको और आपको सात साल होने से रिटायर हो जाते हैं लेकिन प्रधानमंत्री पचहत्तर साल में भी आगे बढ़ सकते हैं और मैं चाहता हूं कि इस स्कूल के ये कॉलेज के जो भी नौजवान है वो उसका एजुकेशन ख़त्म होने के बाद विचार करेंगे कि मैं देश को कैसे मदद कर सकूं और देश को मदद करने के लिए आगे आएंगे तो सब लोग मदद करने तैयार इफ़ यू आस मी टू sum up in a couple of sentences my whole life i would say that i've already spoken about the fun i've had in life but that fun consisted of a lot of activities if i were to enumerate for you all the things that i do with a certain level of efficiency you will tell me that i'm the living epitome of that english saying jack of all trades and master of none i play tennis golf cricket rugby football ski I'm a licensed pilot. I fly planes. I play bridge. I play the piano. I love to cook. There are hardly any human activities which I don't do, but I'm master of none. After the people have had their say, the state, the authorities, and leaders of society and community have also acknowledged the genius of Rusi Modi.
Calcutta. That's my description of Rusi Modi. I met him many years back and he looks just the same to me, full of spirit, full of life, and he has this unique quality of inspiring young people. My son started his career with him and was mesmerized by him, and that made me jealous of Rusi Modi. And then I met Rusi and I realized why people fall for him. And it is a pleasure, and I think he says that Calcutta is a unique city. And I think Rusi is the unique man for the unique city of Calcutta. Happy birthday, Rusi Modi, from Kolkata, the city of your choice. Let the party rule for years to come into eternity. My father and mother really taught me to believe in God. And my firm belief that there should be only one religion in this world, the religion of humanity, and only one God. Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Parsis, they don't matter. What matters is one human being's love for another and everybody's belief in one God. <laughs> 